from Rook High School, WTRF proudly presents Ohio Valley Tonight with Nathan Marshall, tonight's guest. Tonight we are joined by psychic entertainer Michael Makita from Mars. Mars, Pennsylvania. Yes. Mars, Pennsylvania. Thank you for coming in, Michael. I appreciate it. And Michael, this is going to be a little bit of a boring interview because you are psychic and you already know what I'm going to say. So... <laughs> That's right. Uh, the answers are yes, no, uh, occasionally, and she doesn't know, but the neighbors are suspicious. Yeah, the body. Yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> what am I thinking right now is was my next question, so you've already answered that. Uh, you're thinking he's never going to get this one. Well, right? you're correct. Uh, so. Man, you are too smooth. <laughs> but for our viewing audience at home, what is the difference between a stereotypical psychic you see on the television and what a real psychic entertainer does. Uh, well, that whole term real psychic makes me uncomfortable. Okay. I do use the term psychic entertainer uh, for the simple reason that, that my goal is to entertain people. Yeah. Psychic's a bit of a commercial word. I used to call myself a mentalist, mm -hmm. but thanks to a certain TV show, people think that means I'm a, an annoying Australian that <laughs> solves crimes, and I don't do that. Yeah. So um, a psychic entertainer, uh, is very much about using my, my intuition. Is, yeah. uh, the term in the 70s was ESP. It uh -huh. wasn't so much psychic, extrasensory perception. And, and it's not extra. It's not like I put together my furniture from Ikea yeah. and got <laughs> extra pieces when I'm done. Extra actually means to go beyond the ordinary. Mm -hmm. It's more. Uh, so extrasensory perception isn't about having an extra sense. It's about having more perception. Picking up all the same subtle cues of uh, you know, sight and sound and going one step beyond that. And so nobody wants to hire a guy with really good intuition. So, you <laughs> Doesn't know, sound as, as exotic. Right, right. I'm a guy with a plaid shirt, not as cool as a lumberjack. Exactly. What exactly goes on at a party that you're at, Michael? We do little tests, little demonstrations of, uh, it's, it's the mentalism part of it is it's, you know, testing that mental link. Yeah. Um, I have a quick, simple one that you and I can do right okay. now. Let's, this let's is see just, this is, now this is not about reading minds, it's actually about sending a thought, because okay. you know, it, it's not mind reading, it's mm -hmm. really two-way communication. Uh, same as us talking and having a discussion. Yeah. But I have a piece of paper here and right. some scissors. Look out. Oh gosh. Uh, don't run with dangerous. these scissors, I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna move these scissors down the card, okay. and uh, when I get to, to a point that you feel I should stop, I want you to say stop, okay. and, and I will do that, and don't make me cut my finger. Okay, I'll try not but, to. Uh, I am. A lot no, of pressure. Is, a lot rather of pressure. than me reading your mind, I'm actually trying to send a thought to you. Okay. okay we're running out of paper here. Oh, gosh. Uh, I didn't know. I thought you were going to go back I up. I will go back up. Okay. Um, stop. Right so there. Right there. Yeah, now. Uh, yeah. You can change your mind. You can tell me up or down. Uh, I'm when you're sure, you just say cut here. I'm going to stick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. All right. Here. Cut here. There we go. Let me just pick that up. All right. I'm going to hand you those two halves and take take a look at what you've just done. Can you zoom in on that? That is insane. <laughs> I have no clue. It's just cut here. Get, get, him, get him right in, right yeah. up there. Look at that. Cut here. That's pretty impressive, Michael. So, I, what, yeah. You did it, not me. When did you first realize you had this extra sensory ability or this psychic ability? Because I could just imagine you in high school being like, don't go in the cafeteria today. No, <laughs> don't go. Jenny will punch you. Yeah, again, not quite that dramatic. <laughs> Although we do all have moments like that, yeah. right? You've, mm -hmm. you've had a play where you say, you know, I, don't, I just don't want to do this thing tonight or there's going to be problems. Or We all have some degree of that intuition. And it's just something that I developed more. Uh, I liken it to learning to play a musical instrument or mm -hmm. something that we can all learn how to play the piano. Some of us will take to it easily. Some of us will love it and really want to do it. Some of us will hate it and struggle. Some of us will want to do it and still just not have the aptitude and struggle. But we'll all learn to some degree. Uh, this is the same thing. And this is just something I've taken the time to learn and get better at. And uh, I won't say perfect, but I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. And anybody else that learns, takes the time to learn and study what I did, uh, can develop this the same way I did too. I, I don't say I'm anything special. Yeah. I try to emphasize that we are all that special. Yeah, it sounds very 1970s hippie. There's a touch of that. <laughs> sure. that's, that's all right. All right, Michael. We have. Brittany and Lindsay here with us again. We're going to play, you said, some kind of a rock, paper, scissors game here? Yeah. Um, it's a very simple game, yeah. and so keeping it fairly simple like that, because I've just met them, it might be a little bit easier for me to tap in to uh, their thought processes. Uh, Brittany and Lindsay, I'm going to ask you to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. I assume you know how it goes, but we'll explain it for everybody. 
you, you hold out a symbol with your hand. It's either an open hand for a piece of paper, a fist for a rock, or fingers out for scissors. Or and war eagle. Well, we're not doing war eagle. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing, we're not doing, doing derivations. <laughs> and uh, each of you um, pick a symbol and just, just display it up there. You know, whatever it is. No ties, obviously. All right. You got it? Yeah, they got it. Now, Brittany, you didn't win that round, did you? Yes, I did. She did? Okay. You know, put something different in there. And each of you do, do something different now. All right. Okay, have you done that? Okay, yep, they're good. They're good? Brittany, you've won again, haven't you? Yes. Wow, wow, that's really cool. Being a psychic, I imagine it's very difficult to relay to people bad news, such as you're going to die, or <laughs> that you're going to give birth to a four-headed child with horns out of its head. What's the easiest way to tell them that, and what is the worst reaction you ever well, got? Going back news? to that, and, and one of the things I do, in, in addition to stand-up entertainment, yeah. which we'll get to later, uh -huh. is I also do give psychic readings. I do palm readings, I do numerology based on a person's birthday. Uh, and I get that question all the time, well, what happens if you see something bad? The sign of the beast or something. Yeah. So it's more about, uh, you know, if they're on that right path, if they found what works for them, keep it up. And if they're struggling, if there's tension in their lives, it's because they're working against their nature and getting them back on the right track. I don't see their future. We all have free will. We all make decisions that affect our lives. Yeah. I can see the tendency. I yeah. can maybe see where they're headed. Whatever is natural to our personality, if we give to that, if we go with it, we will thrive mm -hmm. with it. If we are working against it, you know, if you're an artistic person who is, you know, trying to study and be a lawyer, you may struggle. Yeah. If you're a very organized, serious person who's trying to become a painter, it may not work for you not either. Best, yeah. So it's all more about being true to our nature. Well, you're a lot like my fifth grade teacher. I had told her I wanted to be a Chinese ninja football player that rides a dragon, and she told me I'd be lucky to graduate high school. We have a student question, Michael, from Brook High School freshman Carissa Garod Wine, and Carissa says this: If I come to you for psychic help, what can I expect for the money that I gave you? That's a good question because you want to know where you're, what's happening with your money, I guess. Again, why I use the term psychic entertainer? I I am here for fun. I don't want to talk to people who have problems and try to solve them. If you're sick, see a doctor. Yeah. If you're in trouble, get a lawyer. Have you actually had people come up and ask, uh, I have cancer, and you know, uh, what can I do? Never anything to that extreme. Yeah. I did, uh, I, I was working at a restaurant once that, that hired me, they had Psychic Thursday. Yeah. Psychic Thursdays at Fuddruckers. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, fries and a, and a palm reading. <laughs> but somebody came to me and said, well, well, we're worried about making our mortgage payments, what should we do? And mm -hmm. I, well, you should probably quit eating out and <laughs> quit asking psychics for advice. And, You'd be you know, president. Gosh. A, you know, a little more, you know, a little more responsible. Uh, if, if anyone meets a psychic who says they can solve all your problems or talk to your dead grandmother and find out where she hid the will yeah. or anything, uh, uh, the simple process is raise your left hand, turn it this way, put it on your wallet, <laughs> and you run in the other direction. I thought you were going to do the Macarena there for a second. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not quite. But yeah, just, just <laughs> put your money in your wallet thing. and get away. Yeah. Again, I want to thank my guest today has been Michael Makita, psychic entertainer from Mars, from Mars Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Right. And for more information on Michael or psychic entertainment, you can visit. Uh, you can email me at yeah. psychic at consolidated.net. Right. It's a little tough to remember. So I belong to a group of, of multi-talented performers, uh, musicians, improv comedians, belly dancers, fire eaters. Uh, dancers, we do so I'm much. In. We've named ourselves the Much Ado Players. Like the Much Ado Players on Facebook or muchadoplayers.com. We'll give you all the contact information. The great thing is there's no copyright infringement because and Shakespeare's dead. That's right. And there's a phone number on there. Call me. I'll be expecting you. Great. And he'll know you're calling. So for Ohio Valley Tonight, this has been Nathan Marshall. <laughs> and sometimes I do help people that are frustrated that, well, you know, you're fighting your nature. And... <laughs> Did someone just fart? <laughs> I heard too. I'm sorry, Michael. Me. Came from over there uh, somewhere. <laughs> I think it was the hinges on the door back there were, were creaking. Dude, my head just shot. It was like so loud in this. Is that right? <laughs> that, was loud, but it sounded, that was the loudest fart I've ever heard in my life. It was from that way, right? <laughs> it's a sonic boom. Wow. Anyway, let's try that one again. <clears throat> Being a psychic, I, I imagine it's difficult. At 13.08, there would be a loud fart. <laughs> it's right here. 13.